and I can't understand for the life of me why nobody's talking about this, why the media's not covering it, and why it's not getting more attention. Kalen DeBoer just solved a massive problem for this Alabama football team, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to be the difference maker in wins and losses. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you had a great start to your week, had a great Monday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. And so far, up until this point, it's been a relatively quiet offseason. Outside of the past couple of days with Arch Manning having that amazing spring game, we talked about that, and recently we've talked about Coach Prime in Colorado, the drama that's going on there. Yeah, it's been quiet. That's just how things have been, and I'm not too sad about it because in the offseason and when there's not a lot going on, this is when we get to work on our documentary videos, and you guys have really been enjoying those. But I think we're all in the same boat on this. The one thing that makes this community what it is is the daily uploads and the double uploads all throughout the season when we're talking about the news nonstop 24-7. And I want to give a quick shout out to Ethan Walker here. He commented this on the last video when we talked about Arch Manning. Just got my phone after graduating from Army BCT and hearing your voice felt like reuniting with a long lost friend. I literally used to listen to your videos every night while I worked out between calls at work. Well, first things first, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to clap it up, clap it up to him. Congratulations on that. And secondly, thanks for being a part of our community and thanks for coming back. I really appreciate you taking some time out of your day and watching the videos and kicking back, relaxing with us. And that's all this channel is about, man. We're just a bunch of guys and girls that like talking about college football. And I share that with you because I've seen multiple comments of people saying the same thing or relatively the same thing. When the season's over, they're not watching the videos as much. They're not keeping up with it because it's not anything that's bad on our channel. It's just college football, it's over, it's not relevant. However, when the season does come back around, it is almost like we all come together and we reunite. So I just wanted to say I greatly appreciate you guys and y'all really make this feel like a very wholesome community and I can't thank you enough. Now getting that out the way, I know that was somewhat irrelevant compared to what we're about to get into, but I did want to express my gratitude to you guys for just a second. We haven't talked about, now that I think about it, I can't even remember the last time we talked about Alabama. Oh, oh, oh. no, I do remember. It was when we had that huge snowstorm in northern Alabama where I had that huge snowstorm and all the Alabama players they were transferring left and right and we were doing daily vlogs on the channel in the man cave. Man oh man that wasn't just a wild time on the channel that was a wild time in my life. It didn't even feel real it felt like a fever dream because out of nowhere nobody saw it coming. Nick Saban he retires that shell shocked me it didn't even sit in with me until about a month or two later but while that's going on and you're trying to handle that you got all these Alabama players leaving left and right and then right after, I'm talking about a week after Saban retires, northern Alabama, where I reside at, we get this huge snowstorm, and it's like five degrees for the next eight or nine, ten days, so the snow couldn't melt, and you couldn't go anywhere. So I had no choice but to watch my team, Alabama, literally fall apart one by one. Couldn't go outside, couldn't do anything. I just had to watch it and suffer. No joke, guys. I remember waking up every single morning around 6.30 or 7.00, and thinking to myself, all right, this was the first thing I thought about every single day. <sighs> all right, let's see who entered the portal today. It was madness. I digress. I don't even want to really think about that too much. And I'm just glad we're past all of that because it wasn't fun. Anyways, though, moving along here. After talking about whenever Alabama hired Kalen DeBoer, I can't remember exactly when that was. Those were the last times we even talked about Alabama. We haven't talked about them how they've been looking in spring practices. We didn't even talk about the A-Day game, none of that. And I didn't think not covering the A-Day game would have been as big as a deal as it was, but I even had a couple of you coming up to me in public saying, yo, Matt, where's the A-Day video? We didn't even get a reaction for it. That's when I knew it was a big deal, when people were calling me out for, not just in the comment section, but in public. And I explained my reasoning for not talking about the A-Day game in the Texas video we made a couple days ago, but I know some of you didn't see that video, so I'll say it again here. And I'll tell you the same thing I told everybody in public. I myself have never cared about spring games too much, and I don't put too much weight into them. The reason for that is because it's dang near impossible to evaluate your team. Because let's say your offense goes out there and scores 50 points, or they do really good. Well, is that because the offense is really good, or is that because the defense is really bad, and it's vice versa? If your offense is struggling, well, does that mean your offense is really bad, or does that mean the defense is really good? It's a double-edged sword. And plus, with Alabama not having any question marks at the quarterback position this year, there's nothing to talk about. The only time you'll ever see me talk about a spring game is if there's a quarterback battle going on. That is the only thing that intrigues me and I think is even worthy of talking about. I know we make a lot of videos on this channel, but I don't just make videos to make videos. I don't just throw up slop or at least I try not to. 
I try to make videos that are valuable. And maybe saying valuable is the wrong word, but let me explain this a little bit better. Let me dumb it down. I don't want to waste your guys' time. Every single time before I record a video, I ask myself the same question. Would I watch this video? If the answer to that question is yes, I'll make it. If it's no, well, you know, I don't make it. And to me, the A-Day game wasn't worth talking about. No quarterback battle, everything looks smooth there, the offense looks smooth, and the defense looked good. Getting that out the way though, yesterday, Alabama got some big time news. And I can't understand for the life of me why nobody's talking about this, why the media's not covering it, and why it's not getting more attention. In my humble opinion, this isn't just good for Alabama, this is huge, this is vital. Kalen DeBoer just solved a massive problem for this Alabama football team, and I'm telling you right now, this is going to be the difference maker in wins and losses. For those of you that didn't hear the news, and I got a feeling a lot of you didn't, Alabama just signed the best kicker in the nation in 2023, Graham Nicholson from Miami. Last year, he won the Lou Grazo Award, which goes to the best kicker in the nation. So me calling him the best kicker in the nation, that's not my opinion. That is a cold hard fact. He went 26 for 27. I'm going to say that one more time. 26 for 27. Not on extra points on field goals. And whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I know it's something you're about to say. Matt, my brother, are you kidding me? This is the big deal? This is huge to you? Come on, we're talking about a kicker, man. And hey, I understand your argument, but hear me out. Let me explain. I know, I know, I know what everybody's saying. Well, Matt, this is a kicker, dude. This isn't like getting a five-star quarterback or running back or wide receiver. And my rebuttal to those statements is this right here. You're 100% right. Most people are going to overlook this due to the fact... It's not a game changer. It's not a guy that's going to throw touchdowns, catch touchdowns, or run for touchdowns. But as a college football fan myself, the one thing I've come to know is having a reliable kicker is one of the most important things on any and every football team. They say defense wins championships, and I firmly believe that, and I agree with it. But special teams, they play a big role as well. And if you're an Alabama fan, I shouldn't have to sit up here and run you through the ringer and remind you why having a good kicker is important because you know why. Do you want me to bring it up? The one thing that everybody forgets to talk about in that 2013 Iron Bowl, the kick six, that's what I'm referring to, is the kick six wouldn't even happen if Alabama's field goal kicker could have made a chip shot. He missed, what was it? I know he missed three. He might have missed four 35 or 40 yard field goals. I've never seen anything like that. And there was a while there where Nick Saban thought about retiring just due to how bad the kickers were. Alabama not having an average kicker, it cost Nick Saban at bare minimum one championship, if not two. From 2010 all the way up until 2020 when we got Will Reichard, the kicking game in Alabama, it wasn't just average, it was far below average. It was bad. And as an Alabama fan myself from 2010 all the way up into 2020, I never for one second thought when our kicker walked out there on the field that he was going to make it. I always thought he was going to miss it. However, that changed when we got Reichard. For the first time in my life, when I saw Reichard walk out on that field as an Alabama kicker, I genuinely thought he was going to make every single kick. And I can't tell you how great of a feeling that is, especially being an Alabama fan through those years where we struggled mightily with big-time kicks. I wouldn't even say having a great kicker is a luxury. I'd borderline say you dang near need one if you want to win a championship. As most of you know, we did lose Will Riker, and he was amazing, but he's been at Bama for like four or five years now. He's out of eligibility. So now, heading into our current offseason, the kicking position, it was really wide open. It was up for battle. And I got a buddy that works on the practice squad for Alabama, and he was telling me up until this point, until we signed this new kicker, it wasn't looking too good. The bottom line is, I think most of your college football fans, they don't understand how important it is having a good kicker until you don't have a good one. For me, myself, I still remember those years where we struggled with Cade Foster. Oh, man. Then we had Adam Griffith, and he was all right, but nothing special. Then we had the, who was it, the Papa Nostis dude. His last name started with a P. He missed that. We wouldn't even have to go into overtime with Georgia if he would have made a chip shot to win the national championship. And this right here, for us to go from having no kicker at all, it's a question mark, to having now the best kicker in the nation, it can't be understated. This is big time. Because having a great kicker like this, it's a weapon. Welcome to the team, Graham Nicholson. I think I speak for every Alabama fan when I say this. Welcome to the team. We're happy to have you here. The one thing that's going to be interesting to pay attention to is, is the moment at Alabama going to be too bright for him? It's one thing to be a really good kicker for Miami of Ohio. It's another thing to be a really good kicker for Alabama. There is a lot more pressure, and i got to give credit to Nick Saban for saying this. 
being a kicker is one of the hardest things in the world because you got one shot. You got to be a cold and silent assassin. Or actually, I don't think he said cold, silent assassin. I'm pretty sure he just said silent assassin. I'm not too sure why I added cold in front of that, but you get what I'm trying to say. For some people, it's not a big deal. Like Riker, he was a sniper. So can this guy replace him and be just as good, if not better? I guess I'll have to wait and see. For now, though, I'll tell you this much. I'm pretty comfortable with the kicker position. I have a hard time believing this guy's just going to completely wet the bed. I think he's going to be a-okay. There's many more things I could say. I'll end it off there. Let me know your thoughts down below. But